The rise and fall of EC Comics in a time of mass paranoia and fear. The 1950s. Crusade for Freedom is your chance and mine to fight communism. Join now by sending your contributions to General Clay. The 1950s was a time of conformity, nuclear families, anti-communist sentiment, white superiority, and mass consumption in America. Anything challenging or deviating from these values was viewed as a threat to the nation and its way of life. In 1954, psychiatrist Frederick Wortham wrote The Seduction of the Innocent in hopes to ban the sale of comic books to children. He sought to inform parents of the violence, crime, and corruption found in comic books. The real question is this. Are comic books good or are they not good? If you want to raise a generation that is half stormtroopers and half cannon fodder with a dash of illiteracy, then comic books are good. In fact, they are perfect. Wortham wrote that Comic books and life are connected. A bank robbery is easily translated into the rifling of a candy store. Wortham hoped to convince parents that juvenile delinquency was an imitation of the violence and crime found within comics. His work, The Seduction of the Innocent, along with the Senate subcommittee hearings on comics in 1954, eventually led to some censorship within comics. Titles were no longer allowed to contain the words crime, horror, or terror. EC Comics were at the forefront of blame for juvenile delinquency, imposing a threat to the nuclear families and conformity of the 1950s. EC Comics were created by Max Gaines in 1944. They were first known as educational comics and began as publishing Bible and historical stories. In 1947, Max Gain died in a boating accident. His son, Bill, took over and changed the name to Entertaining Comics. The company saw a massive rise in sales with new titles of horror, suspense, combat, crime, and science fiction. Today, the comics are mostly remembered for their shocking and grotesque covers, as well as their inspiration for many authors and filmmakers such as Stephen King, George Romero, Steven Spielberg, John Carpenter, Joe Dante, and R.L. Stein. Often hidden behind their violent and pulpy exteriors, the stories provided criticism and commentary on important issues in America during the time, such as racial, ethnic, and religious prejudices, nonconformity, and anti-communist sentiment. From the many stories EC has put out, I am choosing to focus on two dealing with race, because oftentimes EC comics are simply reduced to their horror and grotesque covers. I want to look at what were referred to as their preachies, which focused on delivering a valuable message to its readers. One story I'd like to examine is titled Judgment Day, from Weird Fantasy number 18 in March 1953. Judgment Day tells the story of an astronaut from Earth who lands on a robotic planet called Cybrenia to see if the planet is ready to join their interplanetary alliance. The astronaut learns that the blue and orange robots segregate among each other and treat each other differently. The blue robots live on the other side and are not given the same privilege as the orange robots. The astronaut points out the flaws in this planet's segregated way of life and tells the robotic society that they are not advanced enough to join their alliance. In the final panel, the astronaut takes off his helmet and you can see that he's black. The story was met with much criticism and backlash, particularly the Comics Code Authority, which demanded the astronaut be white. EC Comics stood their ground and the story was published making it one of the first mainstream comics to feature an African-American protagonist and deliver a message of racial equality.
Another story I'd like to take a look at is called The Guilty, from Shock Suspense Stories number 3 in July 1952. The story forces readers to look at anti-black violence and discrimination within the criminal justice system. The tale involves a black man named Aubrey Collins, who was arrested for suspicion of murdering a white woman. When taken to prison, a mob of angry whites surround the place demanding justice. The sheriff is set on punishing Collins for the crime, despite the evidence. When a lawyer arrives to defend Collins, the sheriff forces him out of the police car at gunpoint and tells him to run. The sheriff then shoots him and claims Collins was trying to escape. The next panel shows that a white man had just confessed to murdering the woman. Following this, a caption states, Whether Aubrey Collins was innocent or guilty is not important, but for any American to have so little regard for the life and rights of any other American is a debasement of the principles of the Constitution upon which our country is founded. One letter from an African-American reader sent after the story's publication said, I am colored and do not object to this kind of story. On the contrary, I wish there were more to show how shameful and horrid prejudice really is, and how it is a mar on the beautiful face of America. This story is all too true and real. All Americans should read it. While only a handful of the many stories EC Comics put out dealt with race and discrimination, nearly all of their stories delivered some sort of message. They often involved people doing wrong, and their own wrong coming back to bite them both literally and figuratively. The fear of comics corrupting young minds, and EC Comics in particular during the 1950s, were analogous to the fears of communism and any deviation from the traditional American nuclear family. American society feared what they did not understand, judging people, religions, forms of government, and even popular culture simply by their covers instead of truly looking on the inside. Dang it, dang, dang, ding it on, ding, do.